As a summary for this series, we are going to uh, finish with the performance tips chapter. And of course, there's a lot of performance tips and um, out there, again, I cannot stress enough how uh, important to sign up for the Trailblazer community and connect with other Trailblazers for tips on projects and use cases they probably have already covered um, already and published some information about. Now, when it comes to the dashboard, there's a lot of things, there are a lot of things happening on the dashboard. As you can see from this diagram, there's a lot of steps. Uh, there's the so-called Apex steps going all the way out that, that can affect the performance of the dashboard because they are real time. Uh, you have a lot of bindings happening. Uh, result bindings are costly. Keep that in mind. Uh, there's the regular faceting. Um, we have the selection filters, for example. We have global filters, which are good, again, because they execute uh, before anything uh, against the data sets. And we have also connect data sets, again, linking the data sets at the, um, at the designer layer. Uh, things we shouldn't forget about, the connection speed can play a role. Even the browser or the pow power of the machine we are displaying the data or querying, that can uh, pl play uh, a role. Even sometimes, sometimes, rarely, uh, rare cases, depending on the data volume and the queries, the type of the browser you are using can affect some of these things. Uh, we are going to show you the dashboard inspector in a bit, just to let you know to know about the queries, gives you an idea what, what are the queries that are slow or not. And again, keep in mind that there's a lot of things happening on a dashboard typically. So some of the tips obviously reduce the number of queries. Um, if you have four metrics, like sum of amount, count of rows, sum of external amount, do not use three steps to produce those numbers. You can use just a compare table with multiple metrics and uh, use that same step to feed those three widgets. So consolidate the steps, the queries. Use pages to divide the number of queries being run when you preview the dashboard uh, only to the ones that are on that page. Reduce a little bit the number of filters. The filters, by that we mean the selections, the list selectors, because some, if you have a starting value, for example, you're going to have to run the query and then get the first value or that value and then filter the, the result. And again, we're talking about heavy uh, or large number of steps on a dashboard or large volumes of data. Use global filters. Minimize bindings. Try to use connect data sources as much as you can. Um, again, the selection filters with the start values, we talked about this. And um, if you are doing some heavy cycle, it's always recommended to group on the high cardinality fields first. Then you can rearrange or reorder in the post projection. And then this is again specific to cycle. Use minimal decimals. Uh, you saw when we were creating derived fields in the compute expression, there was a section for uh, the scale. So again, use the minimal decimals if you don't need them. And this is important in large volumes of data, again, at the data set level. Uh, data sets not only should have the expected number of rows, but the dimension, uh, same dimension cardinality. What we mean by this is sometimes when, you, when we have uh, big volumes of data in production, we're talking about 50 million, 100 million rows and, and uh, above, and you want to bring a sam usually customers bring a, a sample of those to the sandbox. That sample, sometimes, again, when you go above 100 million rows, might be just the same state. It happens to be just random and the same state. It doesn't have the same a mix of cardinality of, you know, not just state, uh, across 10 or, or 15 fields. So that can affect some of the testing. So you want to bring a good sample to sandbox. Always push to the data layer. Creating the right fields is absolutely a best tip and best practice. You create it all in the data, uh, data layer, especially with complex conditions when you have like uh, a case field equal this or that or another field, you can create flags and then use those flags as filters. Create data sets with as much as common lookup fields as you can. This is helpful too because you can use the connect data sources uh, if you are uploading large external data files, again, this is specific to this particular use case, you want to use the data uh, group first by the uh, most likely values. So, example, start with the columns like region, country, uh, date, etc. Try to avoid composite keys or compound keys in the recipes or in, in the augments. Uh, these are heavy, again, just uh, one-on-one -on -one data. Uh, so concatenate the comp composite keys into new fields. So combine them into a new field, and then use that field for augmenting 
or connecting or matching data. Test with large data sets. Again, this would be an issue when you have a lot of data, uh, big volumes. Do not wait until you push to production to test the, uh, uh, the performance. From a performance perspective in the UI, you can use Dashboard Inspector. It will give you um, some idea of what are the heaviest steps you are using. So for example, if you are viewing a dashboard like this, you can go to Dashboard Inspector and take a look at the queries or the steps being used. Look at the heavy numbers, the big numbers, and you can directly determine which query, for example, let's say in this case, um, this guy, this is the query, taking 24. Uh, if there's a heavy step, then you can directly go and uh, try to investigate, modify it, or check what's, what's up with that uh, step that you can uh, kind of uh, increase or enhance the performance.